Hello, today we'll be going over labor statistics, including an example of how to find the labor participation rate and the unemployment rate. Let's just pause before moving forward to go over how this data is retrieved. The government will survey 50,000 households, with each household staying in the survey for six months, and each month, one sixth of the sample will be placed. Now let's begin with the concept of employment, which includes all full-time and part-time workers that are over the age of 15. These workers also must have been actively working in the four weeks prior to being asked by Stats Canada. This includes those that are on sick leave or regular vacation and would have otherwise been working during that time. Now let's talk unemployment, which includes those that are not actively searching or working, such as students or stay-at-home moms and dads. This brings us to the concept of labor force, which is where you add these two previously mentioned categories of employed and unemployed people together. From here, you can figure out that the labor force participation rate is the percentage of those in the labor force out of all of the population that is over the age of 15. Using this population of people over 15 years old, we can also determine both the employment and the unemployment rates. First, we have unemployment, where you take the amount of those employed and divide it by the amount of people that are over 15 years old and multiply this by 100 to get the percent. Then there is unemployment, which is almost the exact same thing, except you take the people that are unemployed and divide them by the number of people 15 years of older and again multiply by 100 to get the percent. Except all these rates are not completely accurate. First, there are discouraged workers who wish they could find employment, but have been searching for so long they've given up hope and are no longer considered part of the labor force or unemployed. Then there are the underemployed, either from having to work a job that is under their skill level, such as a teacher working at a convenience store, or how part-time work is considered employed, even though many part-time workers are still actively searching for more employment and may even consider themselves unemployed. Finally, there are markets that are not surveyed by Stats Canada, including those illegal markets of drugs and weapons, or those that are working under the table. Because these groups do not participate in taxes and the Canadian labor laws, Stats Canada is unaware of them and may consider them either not a part of the labor force at all, even though they are, or unemployed, even though they may be working full time. So as you can see, the unemployment rates of Canada are a bit general, and they don't always show the true reality of the situation. Now that we've covered all the concepts related to labor statistics, let's try an example. After looking up the most recent data from Stats Canada, I found that in December of 2021, there were just over 31 million people 15 years or older, of which just over 19 million were employed and just over 1 million were unemployed. Knowing these values, we're able to determine the labor force from employed plus unemployed which is 19,370,800 people plus 1,212,300 people, giving a labor force of 20,583,100 people. Then the labor force participation rate is found from the labor force of 20,583,000 people divided by the working age population of 31,510,000 people, giving a participation rate of approximately 65%. Finally, the unemployment rate is found from the 1,212,300 unemployed people divided by the working age population of 31,510,300 people, giving an unemployment rate of 3.8%. I hope you enjoyed going over the concepts of labor statistics and an example of how it works. Take care.